I am Dr. Sandra Shannon, Professor Emerita, Department of English, Howard University. I am also president of the August Wilson Society, Dean Elect of the College of American Theater. That's a three-part question. <laughs> you cannot answer that question briefly after having spent approximately, closing in on 30 years, a 30-year relationship with the works of August Wilson. And prior to that, probably about a uh, over five to 10-year uh, relationship with the actual playwright. I knew August. He was very generous with me in sharing some of his material, early material, unpublished material, when I was working on my book, The Dramatic Vision of August Wilson. So I owe a thank you to him for that. He was very, very uh, encouraged uh, that somebody was writing about him. You know, there are a number of the one that sticks out in my mind, among others, there, there is, yeah, one. This one was took place in Independence, Kansas, back in 1996, I believe. It was a conference called the William Inge Festival, I-N-G-E, William and Playwright, a picnic play, playwright. And they were honored, and they honor a playwright every year. And that year they were honoring. August Wilson. And they found me, somehow they found me, I guess just as you found me, and they invited me up to do the bio. They wanted me to just, you know, tell them everything about August Wilson. And of course I accepted and I went there and I'm reading the bio and doing my best to make it interesting. And I look up and August is sitting in the audience. <laughs> I did not know he was gonna be there. And I'm sitting there giving his life story. And, and, and what makes it so interesting to me is that this is early, where not a lot of work had been done on August. And I had to pull together what I could glean from newspaper articles, et cetera. I really had not talked to him. And so it was a very awkward moment for me. And then afterwards, August came up to me and said, oh, you did a really good job. He said, he said, when you get a moment, I want to talk to you about a couple of points. <laughs> so, so that stuck out in my mind. And um, I also present another point that sticks out was that when my book, The Dramatic Vision of August Wilson, copy of which I have handy, <laughs> uh, when it was published in 1995, I was still a professor at Howard University and August was so happy about its publication that he and Costanza accepted an invitation to come and spend an entire day at Howard University as our guest. They spoke to students. We had uh, well attended, two well attended sessions, one in the morning where students got an opportunity to ask uh, oh, I interviewed August in both of those, but the audience also got an opportunity to ask questions of August. Of course, this is back in 1995, before he had finished the cycle. I think 1990, I think he was two trains running, between two trains running and the next play, whatever that was. So he was still in the middle of uh, completing his 10-play cycle, uh, but certainly he had enough work uh, in the bag to have caused quite a stir. And he was quite the celebrity. And we were very honored that he honored my work uh, by coming to the university. And of course, I was just proud, so proud that he would consider my scholarship and honor it in that way. Uh, you love them all. There is something special about each of them. But for me, I think the one that resonates, I think they're on different, and it's a very complex question, Brandon. <laughs> you can't answer this. 
I think the one that resonates with me personally the most is Fences. Because as I indicate in the preface to my book, The Dramatic Vision of August Wilson, Troy Maxim reminded me, and so many other African-Americans growing up in the South, not just the South, of the sort of uh, the father that Troy Maxim represented. And so I saw reflections of my own father in Troy early on when I was doing my research on August uh, on August's work. And I, basically that's what really drew my attention. So who is this man that knows about my dad, is writing about my dad? Uh, but then I think on a more critical level, a more, I guess, scholarly level, uh, I like Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Because there's so much as you can do with Joe Turner's Come and Gone in the classroom. And so I'm talking to you through the lens of Professor Emerita, Dr. Shannon. But I do know, and several friends of mine have asked for recommendations as well of, you know, you can't teach all 10 of them. So which of those that you absolutely should teach? And Joe Turner's Come and Gone always makes my list because I think you can teach history. You can use Joe Turner's Come and Gone and pair it with other historical occurrences in what, 1911, 1910, 1911. Uh, coming out of slavery, reconstruction. So you could pair that and use that as a, a companion text. And I think that, I think students would respond to teaching just history for history's sake, uh, uh, as opposed to just, you know, making it breathe more and seeing how it 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 sort of uh, runs the course in that particular play. That is not to say that there, may, there are not other plays that are similarly uh, informed by the decade, you know, by the decade in which they're set. Great Migration, we talked about the Black Codes, a uh, number of those historical uh, things that actually ha occurred. August, wasn't he? He claimed that he wasn't an, an historian, but if you read Joe Turner's Coming On, there are so many things there that you can pair alongside actual events that occurred in that decade. Reading W. E. B. Du Bois, Souls of Black Folk, for example, Booker T. Washington's Up from Slavery, and other classic texts about that period resonate in that particular play for me. Let's start with Pittsburgh. I think actually what's happening in Pittsburgh, even as we speak, uh, there are many ways that August Wilson has been, you know, uh, claimed, reclaimed, acknowledged by the city. Um, I just so wish that he were alive, he was alive to witness this. But I think the city of Pittsburgh has come around to acknowledge August Wilson's work and how great of a writer he was. Uh, but of course, in terms of me, I mean, when I saw that, when I first saw that question, I was thinking, yes, I'm sure Pittsburgh embraces August. But at this point, the world embraces August. And I think over the years that I've been working, uh, you know, as president of the August Wilson Society, keeping his legacy alive in that regard, and not only that, but also through my scholarship, Brandon, I think being a scholar is another way to preserve August's legacy. So every time there is an article written and published, every time there's a book, every time there's an interview such as this one, when you get to talk about his genius, you know, um, I think it, it, it uh, solidifies his legacy. But I think his, his legacy is, is in good shape currently in Pittsburgh, uh, specifically due to uh, the renovation, recent renovations of his house, the attention that that has garnered, the high profile individuals who invested in that renovation. And so you'll have that, that raises his profile. You have the work that's being done at the August Wilson African-American Culture Center using his net with his namesake. Uh, lifting Black culture, and that's basically what August was all about. And then, of course, you have the archives. The University of Pittsburgh acquired August's archives 
And that celebration, which I'm anxious to take a part in, is 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 um, forthcoming in the first part of March. But I think Pittsburgh is ground zero for all things August Wilson, even though, uh, not only that, but Pittsburgh figures prominently in his body of work, in the American century cycle. So Pittsburgh has a lot to be proud of. But I mean, I see, my, I see myself as a conduit, as a liaison, uh, as an ambassador, <laughs> trying to um, uh, get August into the classroom, uh, get August's work published, you know, just keep his name out there in that regard. Now, of course, I'm not a resident of Pittsburgh. I visited Pittsburgh. I, my research demands that I have a relationship with Pittsburgh and I'm very fortunate to have a good relationship with Pittsburgh as well as those institutions that I just mentioned. And so I would defer, first and foremost, I would defer to those residents of Pittsburgh to answer that question. I do have something to say, however, but I would uh, very much like uh, Dr. Uh, Cornelia Tancheva, uh, who worked tirelessly to actually acquire the archives. So there's a lot of things that were going on, you know, a lot of quiet negotiating and, you know, those things were happening to make this happen. And those people such as Dr. Tancheva deserve all the credit for that. You know, all of the, the foot soldiers, there's a lot of work being done. You know, a lot of times the media only comes in when the hard work <laughs> is coming to fruition. So I want to give credit there where credit is due. But in terms of what it means to me and uh, August Wilson studies, and I say that, and I'm saying that frequently, those three words, because there is a field, a burgeoning field, a growing field, an existing field called August Wilson studies, which is alive and well. And so by having the archives located in Pittsburgh, it's a boom to scholarship. It's almost like scholars, it's like the Mecca. You have to go there. If you call yourself an August Wilson scholar, you cannot call yourself an August Wilson scholar if you have not made that journey. If you've not made that trip, I'm making all this up, of course. But <laughs> But, I, I, but that's just to say how important the archives, how central, how crucial the archives uh, are and will be to August Wilson studies and scholarship and teaching. As a representative of the August Wilson Society, I am thrilled, I'm excited. Um, that phrase full circle, you know, is so it resonates with me for somebody who has worked so long. Uh, it, it's like, you know, we're almost there. We're almost there. So I am just thrilled at all of the, the legacy building that's going on with August Wilson. And I want to also acknowledge his wife, Costanza Romero, who's been a soldier, a trooper in that regard as well, making sure that August is legacy is on solid ground.